Yeah, yeah. What's up, Nick? Uh, I play heavy music with a 22-inch kick now, but heard you talk about your 20-inch kick briefly, which made me wonder if I should downsize. What are your thoughts on that? Hmm. So, I like 20 for a few reasons. The reason I I, re, I I did have a 22 before. I had a DW Performance Series. That was my last kit. I had a 22-inch kick drum. And by all means, for a very long time, 22 was like a standard. My whole life growing up, all kits seemed to came, they came with a 22-inch kick drum. And I thought anything below that was like getting into this puny territory. But having worked in a studio for, you know, 10 plus years, I don't know, man. I just found that 20s give me all of the punch that I need. But, you know, sonically, the difference isn't isn't going to be that massive, right? Like if you're putting an EMAT on them or whatever your go-to kick drum head is, you know, that extra two inches in a kick drum, it, for recording purposes, I don't know that it's gonna make that big of a deal. From a 20 to a 24, that, that that's definitely a bigger difference for sure. You could get for sure some more low end out of a 24. But if the difference between a 20 and a 24 is just a little bit of low end, like I got a little EQ knob right here I can just turn up, mm -hmm. little, you know, hit him with the 250K, you know what I mean? Like you you can just, you can compensate for that and, and get plenty of boom out of a 20. Tune it a touch lower, adjust your mic placement a little bit, slight EQ adjustment, and boom, you're kind of back into that same territory, or at least territory where nobody's gonna be able to, to, to discern this. I think one thing that I dislike is that people talk about kick drum rebound which to me is like it falls into this like old wives tale like mythological territory of like i have never once dealt with kick drum rebound that was in any way so extreme that it made me want to change the size of my kick drum i've owned a 16 inch sonar safari um that was a 16 inch kick drum baby baby kick drum it didn't feel any different to me than a 24 inch kick drum when I had a, a Tama Superstar Hyperdrive. Or there's there's some super old videos on this channel um, of that kit. They really didn't feel any different to me. The, the pedal settings could just override whatever rebound there was. So if anybody's going down that road, I would say don't. Don't think about that. It, it, it's not really that big of a deal. There are some, um, there are some people I know, I'll just start out too, idiots Craig Reynolds and Eric Improta who play giant kick drums I think I think they both play <laughs> well Craig I know has talked about a 24 inch before yeah um he swears by it but you're talking about a guy that does a lot of live shows you know live I get it a little bit more but then that's also contrasted with you got to carry that thing so for me man 20 is this sweet spot where I think when we get down to 18 you know, you are gonna be losing a substantial amount of low end compared to a 22. It's gonna be a pretty big difference. You know, but a 22 for me, it was right on the line of tom placement. That that was really like mm -hmm. the kicker for me is, is putting my 10 inch tom comfortably where I wanted it and even having the option to put like a 12 inch tom, you know, that it was really rough with a 22. And so a 20, for me, it just gave me all of the boom and the low end that I needed. I didn't feel like I was missing anything and it's smaller, it's easier to move. Um, and there is another element of this, and that would be, it's what you're creating. You know, if I was recording um, classic rock albums for a living, then I would probably want a 24 in the studio, right? Just to get that sound, or to start with the correct sound and not have to manipulate it. But for me, I mean, 90 plus percent of my content is going to be consumed on some sort of small speaker playback device, right? I mean, I make content, drum content that goes on the internet. Most of it's watched on YouTube, a lot of it on OrlandoDrummer.com, Instagram, through phone speakers. So the reality is, if I had a 26-inch kick drum, you wouldn't hear any of that. All that low end would just disappear or never even make its way through your speakers because tiny speakers aren't that good at, at uh, putting out really low end sounds, low frequencies. So for me, 20 is the sweet spot. If I had to go in any other direction, I would actually go down. I would go down to an 18 before I went to a 22 for all of those reasons. So that's why I play a 20. I would say unless you're very specifically going in a rock direction um, and you're you're really, really interested in getting like a, a true, organic, authentic, big rock kick sound, then 20's fine. It's totally fine. And it comes with a long list of pros um, in that you know, it's smaller, it's easier to place things around it, it's not gonna have as much um, boominess to deal with in, in audio, so it's not gonna resonate as much, you get a nice punchy sound, which is good for phone speakers. So there's a lot of personal subjective things to consider here, but that's why I go with the 20, so I would say, you know, most people, you're not gonna be missing that much. 
Thank you, Nick, for the question. Yeah, man, that's a good one. Thank you for watching this clip of the Orlando Drummer Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're looking for more content like this, consider yourself formally invited to come join me on OrlandoDrummer.com. It's an online drum school, very much in the style of Netflix. There's over 160 hours of content waiting for you there. You can try it free for seven days at the link in the description. I'll see you guys there.